At Healthcare Partners Medical Group, our mission is to provide the highest quality of healthcare to each and every patient. With five locations in Pahrump, we are local doctors you know and trust. We want to thank you for choosing us. Quality care starts here. News 46 is brought to you by... Healthcare Partners and Humana. News is also brought to you by Pahrump Dermatology and Skin Cancer. When you need the best dermatology care in Pahrump, call Pahrump Dermatology and Skin Cancer, 775-727-9800. Tonight on News 46, the Nye County Sheriff's talk about the recent drug busts. Emergency crews respond to a two-vehicle accident on Highway 372. And we meet a District 2 congressional candidate. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46. With Rick Vale and Rhonda Van Winkle. Local coverage from Deanna O'Donnell and News Across Nevada with Janet Eric. News 46, local coverage you can count on. Good evening, it's Friday, September 2nd, 2011. I'm Rick Vale for News 46. Topping our news tonight, a two-vehicle accident at Highway 372 and Red Butte required Nye County Sheriff's deputies to block the roadway last night while Nevada Highway Patrol conducted an investigation. Here's Deanna O'Donnell with tonight's accident report. Tonight's accident report is brought to you by Stovall & Associates. Don't expect insurance companies to have your best interest in mind. Stovall & Associates cares. Let us help you if you have been involved in an accident. A moderate two-vehicle accident last night around 8.30 p.m. on Highway 372 and Red Butte. Nevada Highway Patrol arrived on scene along with Nye County Sheriff's deputies and Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue. Occupants in both vehicles claimed injury at the time of the accident. However, one declined to be transported. The female inside the gold sedan was transported locally here to Desert View Hospital. Because the accident was strewn across the roadway, both directions were closed on Highway 372 temporarily while Nevada Highway Patrol conducted the investigation. This is Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. And now we join Nye County Sheriff Tony DeMeo and Assistant Sheriff Rick Marshall about the recent drug bust and the destruction of prescription and illegal drugs. With all the recent marijuana busts, there's been an accumulation of marijuana. We went with Nye County Emergency Services Hazmat and Nye County Sheriff's Office Custody Unit to Prump Valley Disposal this morning. You can see right behind me is 300 pounds of marijuana and prescription drugs being disposed of. About the drug busts in general, it, are we actually targeting these or, or are these just coincidences that we're finding so many of these right well, now? Well, first of all, the Scorpion, the task force, and I can't share, so it's always targeted to illegal drug abuse and uh, those people that uh, want to traffic in that particular trade. Uh, the, you, with the recent grow houses, a lot of people being thing, bringing these to our attention. A lot of investigations we've been doing come to a culmination, uh, uh, you know, where we've uh, targeted these areas and uh, these particular properties and be, by developing probable cause we can get the warrant and go in and do this uh, do the warrant search to, to do the seizure and make the arrest so there's a lot of work that's involved and sometimes we just uh, they just comes our way during a routine call for service a deputy might observe something that's suspicious the deputy starts investigating that uh, gives that information to street crime narcotics and uh, then of course then we start uh, doing our investigation and uh, you know we make the arrest uh, and we seize the uh, the the drugs when, when possible and as far as any other type of drugs, how do we dispose of, like, uh, we, have, we bring in hazmat for meth houses, right? Yes, we do. The hazardous materials teams assist us in cleaning up and sanitizing any of the uh, operations that we do that involve use of uh, narcotics, because narcotics are hazardous materials. And who do we have to thank for all of this, actually? I know hazmat is part of it, and the Scorpion Task Force. 
Well, it, it's, the, it's the partnership we have with the uh, county emergency, med, uh, emergency uh, services. They're the ones that assist us in our mitigation of these, uh, of these uh, drug houses and these grow houses and uh, whatever drug uh, labs we come across. And the partnership between the, the uh, county entities uh, to, to actually go out there and uh, make our community safer. And, you know, it's, it's uh, drug abuse and uh, we have to re remove this uh, blight from our community and from the rest of our, and uh, the, of course, making sure that our citizens don't get uh, uh, exposed to this, especially the kids. Once again, we want to thank the Nye County Sheriff's Office and HAZMAT for inviting us along for this. If you would like to find out more about the Medicine Cabinet Program, you can call the Nye County Sheriff's Office at 751-7000. This is Deanne O'Donnell for News 46. And Prom Valley Speedway will induct four legends into the Prom Valley Speedway memory lane during the halftime show tomorrow night. The inductees are Bob Boiling, who originally donated the Speedway property, Ray Wolfenstein, who was one of the Speedway's first announcers, past Speedway owner Bobby Woods, and the current property owner, Bob Huffman. The Pahrump Valley Speedway would like to invite family and friends to this important moment in history. So come to the races. They begin at 7 p.m. For more information, go to PahrumpValleySpeedway.com. And we continue our conversation with homeless Pahrump resident Daryl Parson in our struggling economy. There has been an increase in the amount of homeless individuals. A trend that seems to be more prevalent is the dogs that homeless men and women have with them. Daryl told us that he has started a program to help people who may be struggling to feed their animals. He too currently resides in a homeless camp. Neighbors have complained about the camp because of the debris and his many dogs. He has been given a time limit to move off the government-owned property. Today, Mr. Parson speaks about the private landowner whose property he once lived on before he was forced to move across the street to Bureau of Land Management property. I told him it was a mistake that we was there. All we can do is clean everything up and move out. So okay. the BLM Ranger also came up as well. That's right. Uh, he checked my ID, gave me 14 days on BLM property. That's what I'm on right now. Uh, after the 14 days is, I will be, everything will be cleaned up and we'll be out of there and hopefully everything will lie down and we'll get my help me help others to go in here. You have 14 days that you can stay on BLM property. Then you have to move 21 miles away from that. You got to move 21 miles after that. You can move anywhere. Uh, on BLM property after that, but my, my plan is to get a little vacation uh, going on here. Uh, I'm trying to make arrangements for that after this is all over. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to get this thing up full running because right now, Help Me Help Others can put at least 100 people to work right now. Well, you have um, dogs that you have on the property. You had 10. What happened to the dogs? Okay, I actually had 11. Two was adopted from Walmart, right? The other one was adopted from my next door neighbor, uh, which was Money. He's the, every, all animal control knows him. All animal control, I've been with animal control ever since this dog thing started. So Why is there a dog thing? Why, why when you're homeless yourself, are you having dogs? Well, here's how it started. A Chinese guy come up and gave me Shiva, which is a Chinese pit, right? So at the time, I loved her. I followed, I, you know, I, 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 know, I always wanted a dog. So this, this dog, Sheba, mm -hmm. when I took her into my life, you know, it changed my life mm -hmm. for the better. Yeah. And when I was struggling and I didn't have any money for dog food and everything, I had, you know, I, I had to help. I, had, I asked people for help. So I get out with a sign and say, need dog food. Don't you, know? you think it would be better to adopt the dog to a family in a house that uh, can actually take care of the animal? Well, you know what? That is, that was the, the, the thought that I had in my mind. But there is a bond. Once you, once this animal becomes in your life, it becomes a kid in your life. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of hard to give your kid away, if you know what I mean. Yeah, but you need to provide for your kid properly. Right. So I get out there and I ask for dog food and I do everything that she does. She's never did without dog food. She's never been abused and she's loved. So how many animals do you have now? I have seven now. Actually, I'll take that back. I'm going to have five after the, after this show's over because two of them's going out too. The dogs are actually being given away right now. Yeah. Uh, two people with good homes and a can't afford them. It's got jobs and everything, and that's actually what we're doing. So why don't you just get down to the one dog because it's hard enough for you to take care of yourself. Okay. Well, Sheba ain't going nowhere. Yeah. Sheba is the one that's got all this stuff started. She was the one that inspired me to get help me help others going. And she's just a beautiful dog. You're just going to have Sheba here in about less than a week. But if you've not got a job and you still need that food, where are you going to get it at? 
That's why Help Me Help Others came here. Because if it's just people helping people, you bring me the food and I make sure that it gets to the people that needs it. What are you talking about with the um, Help Me Help Others has the potential to employ 100 people if there's no real money coming in? Well, this is how this works. We just make a booth, we put up a sign. I don't need a, I don't need a zone paper sign or a $10 fee for a booth. I am trying to get donation booths out all over town and, and booths for people to work in and give people jobs. I am, I am sure and positive this program will help everybody in Pahrump because this sign here says, I'm taking all food for all animals because to help me help others is a food bank for animals. All right, and do you actually have um, food stockpiled right now for animals? No, ma'am. I got enough for my dogs right now, and that's why the program is starting over again. So yeah. what's the number for people to call to get in touch with you? Okay, it's uh, right on the sign there. It's, it's 513-8197. And as we head into our first break on this Friday evening, here's a message from our good friends at the Pahrump Nugget. Hi, I'm Jeff Simmons, uh, bingo director here at the Pahrump Nugget Hotel and Casino. A couple of things for Donna. Listen to this. We got uh, the Vegas Road Show on our stage bar tonight and tomorrow night from 6 to 10. So come on down, Donna, and everybody else, come on down to the stage bar. And also uh, in the casino for the month of September, we have our, what is it they call it, the uh, hot seat basket drawing. Anyway, every... Every uh, Sunday from 4 to 9, every half hour, we're having a fi up to $500 cash drawings. That's every Sunday, every half hour from 4 to 9. And bingo. Uh, tomorrow night, Saturday night, or starting tomorrow morning actually, Saturday morning we're having our 24-hour bingo marathon. If you play four sessions of bingo starting tomorrow morning, you can win $25 in slot play. And if you play eight sessions, you get $50 in slot play. And if you play all 12 sessions, you'll get $100 slot play, and two lucky winners will receive $1,250 in slot play. So it's a lot of money to be won there at our 24-hour bingo marathon. It's a lot of fun, too. Bring your blankets and your pills and come on down. And then we do every, uh, every day at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. We have no-split pots and lower buy-ins every Sunday and Monday at all sessions and all 9 and 11 a.m. sessions. We've got a lot of stuff going. Come on down, show your flyers. And if there's any new players out there, uh, I work Sundays or Wednesday through Sunday in the morning till three o'clock. If you come down, you never played bingo before. Come on down. I'll give you a free small rainbow and I'll show you how to play bingo. So, looking forward to seeing everybody. Okay, bye. The Pahrump Nugget, Nugget is bursting with fun. With over 550 machines, we have the biggest slot floor in town. Five levels of play and new machines arriving daily. Our huge pit is open 24-7 and is the most comfortable in town. Plus, we have the finest poker room. Play bingo, browse our gift shop, or enjoy the live entertainment at the stage bar. Our cosmic bowling show is out of this world. Children can play at Kids Venture or at the arcade while you get pampered at a touch of gold beauty salon. We also have three restaurants for your dining enjoyment. Centrally located on the corner of Highway 160 at 372. News 46 is also brought to you by Southwest Medical Associates. Look for news about their latest health care center opening soon in your neighborhood. Southwest Medical Associates, now that's powerful medicine. Welcome back to News 46. He's running for the District 2 congressional seat, and he wants your vote. Meet candidate Helmuth Lehman. Uh, we are a, uh, a small team. We are uh, nonpartisan and we don't have the resources that the Democrats and Republicans have, uh, but we're making uh, do with what we have. We're, I'm traveling around the state. I've been to the eastern parts of the state. I'm now down in the southern part of the state, and we'll be here for a few days and uh, just talking to folks, uh, passing out information about the campaign. And uh, we're running as an independent uh, for the congressional seat in District 2. And the reason we're running, or I'm running as an independent, is that I believe that our parties at this time, the Democrats and Republicans, have become ineffectual and um, can't seem to agree on anything. And as an independent, I believe I'll have the freedom to work with both Republicans and Democrats for the common goals that we need to accomplish here in Nevada. Wonderful. And uh, you said you're from Reno. Mm -hmm. A little history about yourself? 
A little history. Let's see. Um, I went to school down in Texas. Uh, I have a graduate degree in public policy. I went to, to a couple of courses at the LBJ School of uh, Public Affairs. I have a master's in finance and business strategy and uh, used that to uh, become a strategic planner at REI, the uh, outdoor uh, outfitter, and was with them throughout the 90s. And then since then, the last uh, 12 years or so, I've been a turnaround uh, specialist where I come into an organization mm -hmm. and it's poorly performing or perhaps going under. And um, and I come in and working with the same people that are there, no cutting heads and laying people off, working with a team that's in place and putting together common goals, uh, getting their accountability and their commitment and resurrecting the organization. And I've been able to do that successfully in three different occasions. Um, so I feel the collaboration skills that I use in my work are um, the very skills that I'd be using with uh, congressional colleagues if I were fortunate enough to represent the folks of Nevada. Do you have any political background? Uh, political background in terms of running for elected office in the past? No. Uh, a great deal of volunteer uh, background uh, throughout my uh, life. Uh, going back to a student, I was uh, a volunteer for the Disabled Student Services and helped uh, those uh, sight impaired. I would read uh, chapters to them and, they, and make notes for them and that sort of thing. Um, coached football, coached basketball, uh, was involved with the juvenile court and uh, superior court in King County, Washington State for four years counseling uh, kids at risk who had gotten busted for minor uh, crimes and in some cases, uh, you know, almost close to felony but knocked down in misdemeanors and counseling them so they can hopefully stay out of trouble from that point forward and they've learned their lesson to, to kind of, you know, walk a straighter line. Um, so I've always been involved in the community, and I felt that this, with the special interest, uh, the special election coming up in May, uh, and my job being outsourced last summer to Ireland, um, I felt like this was a, a really a good opportunity for me to uh, speak, I believe, for the people, and that's been reinforced by going around and speaking literally to hundreds and hundreds of homeowners and people who have lost their homes, and talked about what's important for you, and that's what my platform's all about. For more information about your campaign, you have a website or contact information? Yeah, uh, it's Helmuth, H-E-L-M-U-T-H-F-O-R, congress.com. So Helmuth for congress.com. Since the Bob Root Community Center shut down, many events have been affected. One of those events is the women's self-defense class. Prom Valley Fire and Rescue Station 1 at the corner of Highway 160 and Basin is the new location for the free Nye County Sheriff's self-defense course. We spoke to Denise Pilkington from Homeland Heroes and Nye County Sheriff's Deputy Summer Daniker. This year, because the Bob Root Center closed down, we kind of had a problem finding a location. But now we are back on track, and uh, the next class is going to be held at the fire department on 160. And we've, we've utilize, utilized that room before, so uh, Chief Lewis has welcomed, welcomed us back. And um, the next class will be on the 17th and 18th of this month, which is two weeks. And Deputy... Why is it so important for women to take this class? You yourself must have so much training. Tell us a little insight on that. That's correct. Um, I think it's important for all the women to take it. Um, it's important for them not to be victims, not to be injured, not to be attacked. Um, and I think it offers them a lot of insight on how to avoid, avoid being a victim. And then also what to do if they ever are presented with any type of attack or sexual assault. And how many years have you been taking the classes or conducting classes? I've been working for the Sheriff's Office out here in Pahrump for about six years, and I've been teaching this class for the last three with Denise. Um, also, our other instructors are Captain Beck, uh, Deputy Cacavolius. We did have um, Deputy Moore, but however, she's retired, mm -hmm. um, so now it's just us three. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of fun. The women that come to the class have a lot of fun. Um, knowledgeable instructors. I've been also a defensive tactics instructor with the department for at least four years and we teach them a lot of good stuff. What's some of the things that you hear the most from people who attend these classes? Well, you know, the, the beginning of the class and throughout the two days we talk about awareness mm -hmm. and uh, simple little things that people go, they kind of wake up and say, oh yeah, I knew that, but you expand on your awareness uh, the thing is, you don't ever want to get into a fight. Mm -hmm. uh, this isn't about getting into fights. This is about rape and abduction. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, there are people out there right now that are doing things that they normally wouldn't do. 
uh, stealing purses and things like that, hurting people. Uh, you've seen it on the TV. You know, 80-year-old 80, 80 women who are out in the parking lot and people are grabbing their purses and stuff. Um, the awareness portion of it uh, is so important besides just being able to defend yourselves. You also have to remember that it is not just uh, it, it's not just a male person that might be after you. It could be a female also. Yeah. Lots of things are happening these days. We see more and more of that, aren't we? Exactly. Um, this class is free. You can bring friends. You can bring out-of-town relatives and friends. We've had women um, come up from Clark County to take the course. Mm -hmm. it, it's a lot of information. It's squeezed into two days. It is free. So there shouldn't be any excuses why somebody can't make it. Um, we encourage all disabilities. Um, age restrictions, if they are under 18, they do need to speak with Denise prior to attending the class to get parent authorization. And how do they sign up? Uh, they, they can call me, and my name is Denise. I'm with Homeland Heroes. My phone number is 775-513-8636. Um, please remember that the ages are from 14 to 89, everything in between. And Marvin Caperton tells us about the Stage Stop Summer Block Party, which was held this past weekend. We're here at Summer Block Party 2 at the Stage Stop in Heath Lab Factory here on Irene and Blagg. We're going to speak to Marvin Caperton. We need some more people out here. Um, they're starting to come after the sun goes down. I guess it was so humid today we had a slow income, but they're starting to show. Music is nice. Nice artist performing right now, Chelsea Taylor. She's a new artist coming out. Um, vendors are here, food is here, what else could you ask for? Um, this is a really great event that's kind of helping the stage stop and Heath's Lap Factory get some people in since the road closure. Are we going to continue do that, doing this? Uh, to the best of my ability, we're going to continue as often as possible. At least once a month we'll have an event like this here. So. This is a great area to have this. I hope so. I, I think it's really nice grass. It's, you know, we'll have eventually volleyball court or volleyball net and we got the bounce house for the kids. Cool zone water, you know, yeah. There you go. And uh, for more information on this, can people contact you for the next one? Yes, ma'am. Same numbers as before, 702-834-2119 or 775-209-2362. And do we know what the date of the next one? Nope, haven't figured it out yet. Probably in the middle of the month, though, so we don't cross over with the other. Problem. Thank you so much. Thank you. And here's West Star Ranch Animal Rescue with this week's Save a Pet segment. Save a Pet is generously brought to you by Auto World at 727-8000 and Greenspan Brokerage at 751-6200. Put the green team to work for you. Hi, I'm Eileen. I'm here at West Star Ranch Animal Rescue and I'm here today with Bullwinkle. Bullwinkle is a Norwegian hound. He's about 10 years old, so he's been with us a while. Uh, he's all ready for adoption if you want to come and see him. Uh, his fee would be $75 because he's spayed and fixed. He's spayed and neutered, had all his shots. And um, we're located at 780 East Mance. We're open six days a week and closed on Tuesday. That's 780 East Mance. Our phone number is 727-9273. That's 727-9273. If you would like to sponsor Save a Pet, give us a call at 727-9400. To adopt, donate, or contact West Star Ranch, call 727-9273. And folks, we're going to have Zach Fuentes with a look at your seven-day forecast coming up right after this break. Please keep it here. News 46 weather is brought to you by Healthcare Partners Medical Group with five locations in Pahrump, local doctors and professional staff providing total care from infancy to seniors. News 46 weather is also brought to you by your local dairy farmers. Dairy products are very important in maintaining a healthy body. For more information, you can visit their website at nevadadairycouncil.org. Hey there, welcome back to News 46. I'm Zach Fuentes here with your weather. So today we had sunny skies and a high of 100 degrees. Our winds coming out of the south-southwest at 5 miles per hour and our gusts up to 11 miles per hour. Our pressure went up a little bit there at 29.97 and our UV index is at 5, which is very high. Our humidity was at 9% and our sunrise was at 6.16 a.m. Our record for today was back in 1950 at 110 degrees. 
tonight, we're going to have clear skies, a low of 74 degrees. Winds coming out of the north again at 3 miles per hour, and our gusts set up to 7 miles per hour, not too windy there. Humidity is also going to be at 7%, and our sunset's looking to be at 7, 12 p.m. Our record for today was 56 degrees back in 1964. Tomorrow, we're actually looking at partly cloudy skies for a change, a high of 102 degrees and a low of 76 degrees. Winds to come out of the southwest at 4 miles per hour and our gusts at up to 7 miles per hour. Our humidity is looking like it's going to be 9% and our UV index is going back to what we're used to at 9, which is very high. Our sunrise is looking to be at 6.17 a.m. And our seven-day forecast, Saturday, we're looking at partly cloudy skies. Saturday up until Monday, actually. And Saturday, Sunday, we're going to be in the triple digits there. But actually, for the rest of the week, we're going to be in the double digits again. We've lost the triple digits, so hopefully it stays that way. Monday is going to be windy at, with gusts at up to 22 miles per hour. And Friday, if you see there, we're actually looking at a chance of rain. So we're going to see if that happens or not. And it's also going to be windy with gusts up to 22 miles per hour. Our overnight lows are in the 70s. And today's worst weather was in Kings Lake, Louisiana, where they had flooding downpours. Back to you. Thank you very much, Zach. Looking forward to those double digits. Folks, please be sure to subscribe to our free weekly email newsletter. To subscribe, just visit our website at kpvm.tv and fill in the form right on the main page. The newsletter is filled with top stories, coupons, articles, and more. And a free computer instruction is available at the library. Computer classes for beginner-level computer users are offered Wednesdays at 1 p.m. You can sign up right at the library. The Backyard Barbecue No. 2 will be held tomorrow night at Threads Clothing Company on Loop Road beginning at 4 p.m. with Real Big Fish, Guilty by Association, Tuesday After School, Everyone Meltdown, and more. For more information, go to ThreadsFest.com or call 727-4420. And once again, we are still accepting applications for part-time news internship. If you would like to sit up here at the desk and give it a go, see if you can handle the teleprompter and what we do, feel free to visit us here at kpvm.tv up on the hill or just email us at news at kpvm.tv. And folks, that's going to do it for this edition of News 46. I'm Rick Vale, and from everyone up here on the hill at KPVM, we wish you a safe evening and a great Labor Day weekend, and we'll see you here again on Tuesday night. Until then, good night, Prump.